so I'd like to do something more engaging graphically. What I'd like to do is create a graph, okay, a, a plot over time, um, which depicts uh, some of these variables. So to do that, again, in the analysis area, you'll notice there's a thing called time plot. There's another one that's more general called plot. Um, we can drag in a time plot, okay? Um, and um, I'd like you to enlarge the chart. So we do that by grabbing onto these handles and, and pulling, you know? Um, and, uh, and then uh, you're gonna need to specify what is to be uh, displayed on this chart. Um, and you'll notice right now it gives it, it has a certain time window. Let's increase that. I don't, I don't want it to be truncated time-wise. Um, and it says, do, do I update the chart periodically with a certain rate or, or, um, or just manually? I'll say uh, periodically and display the latest uh, thousand samples. So it displays over a certain period of time and up to a number of items. And what do we display? This is what it's asking. Let's add the data item to display. Uh, we can have a chart which includes many data items, and indeed we're going to do that right now. So the first one is going to be um, count in poverty, okay? Um, and it's asking, is this a value or is it an item from a data set? Well, we can do either one here. Um, sure, we could choose it from the data set, um, and it will be count in poverty DS, okay? We could also do it as a value by calling the statistic, again, directly on the, on the population. But if it's available as a data set already, if it's already computed the statistic, there's no use for having it do the work again, okay? Um, so that's count in poverty. Time plot. Yeah, the time plot. And I had set um, the time window to be 1,000 display up to a thousand samples. Can you get a TA? A TA? TA? Um, very good. Um, sorry? Um, oh, you mean of the model? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't saved this uh, for a bit. Do you want me to save it right now? Okay, okay, sure. Um, so I will um, I will save this without this new guy, and then we'll 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 add it. Okay, so I'm gonna save it. Um, I'll do save save to my to my folder, and then I'm gonna go. Um, oh darn it! Now I'm on this different machine. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, uh, this is a um, not from this machine. No, because um, I'm not in this uh, local network. Okay. Um, Bad with a B, uh, capital B. Um, okay, let me let me go get um, a thumb drive and I'll I'll make this happen. Although less quickly than you'd like. Um, okay. Um, okay. So um, we'll just go go copy it. Okay. Let's continue on though while I'm while I'm doing this. So um, uh, we we've added one. Now let's let's add another one. Let's make this one um, count infectious, okay? And this will be again be a data set. It'll be the data set will be infectious DS, okay? Um, and let, let's run this right now and just make sure it, it works. This is a simple experiment. Um, and we, what we should be able to have is a chart that looks like this. Okay. Um, question is, uh, there we are. There we are. Here's a here's a value up up here. Um, and this is uh, okay. Um, that's that's not of um, greatest. Um, it's not too impressive. So what so what's going on here? Let's let's go. It's a little bit different than what I expected it to look like. Um, okay. So here's our. Um, uh, we're, we're displaying, oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, folks. Um, okay, that, that's an interesting um, comment. Um, okay, um, hmm. it's, uh, it's interesting. Okay, 
I'm going to actually make the time window shorter um, so we can see it more resolution. And um, I think I have an idea of what's going on. In fact, um, I'm, I'm pretty clear. But um, let's, uh, let's change this to value here for, for count of property. So instead of doing that, and then let's call directly in the population. People dot count, um, uh, count in poverty. Okay, um, and uh, let's let's go run this now. Um, and uh, what we should see is um, okay, okay. Now that's still uh, reporting the count in poverty as as just below. Okay, this is kind of clipped, so I can't even see fully what it what it is. Um, oh, look at that. Um, okay, infectious DS is zero, and the count in poverty is it's straight. Okay, so what's what's going on here? Poverty is in time because no one's dying because no one's getting infected. Okay, um, so 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 what's what's happening? I mean, this is totally unexpected. Um, uh, I closed this and I, I came back to it. Is yours the same thing? <laughs> okay. So so uh, we, uh, so uh, okay. So we can we can do one of two things. We can gloss over this, or we could. Um, okay. Or or we could see me debug it. How many people want to see me debug it? Okay. Um, I will crush this bug. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so so um, let's go figure out what's going on. Um, no, seriously, it's, again, one of the most useful things is to see a, a little bit on the debugging side. So I'm going to start this thing running. And first, I'm just going to explore a little bit what's, um, what's going on. OK, so I'm, I'm going to speed this up a bit. OK, oh, there we go. OK, um, maybe it just died out stochastically before it spread. Can that happen? Yeah. Yes, it can. So in short, I may have been lucky. I crushed the bug. Um, <laughs> OK. OK, folks. So, <laughs> so, um, uh, so you know, sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you ain't. <laughs> uh, so that was a, a pretty, pretty effective debugging session. Um, <laughs> And um, now we have this uh, video on. Now notice that, that um, it's uh, displaying this one. This one is actually um, starting to disappear. You see that occasionally. What's that? That's a bug. What's that a sign of? You got it. You got it. So one of these guys is keeping the last 100 or so. And that's this guy here, an infectious. And one of them is keeping the last 1,000. Um, and, uh, and that's that guy. Hence, it, it showed more. So if we wanted to display, um, display both, uh, but that's a very common thing you, you see in this. And so I recognize it from before. Yeah, but that, that was because I was trying to uh, probe to see if that was something related to the, the data set being off. Um, actually, what we could leave this as infectious DS. We actually don't need to do it in calling. Um, it, it, it'll be fine to leave it that way. Okay, sorry. Uh, boom. Infectious DS uh, uh, should be the data set. Okay, infectious DS. Um, infectious DS. Boom. Uh, should be the data set on which it depends. And and then run and. Um, uh, Okay, and and there it will. Um, uh, it, this is uh, the count uh, count infectious. Oh, you know what? What what am I doing? I I, I did something crazy. Um, this is count in poverty. It should be a count in poverty DS. Count in poverty DS. Now in Java, normally we name variables with a lowercase. So I I did it in lowercase. They did it in uppercase. But Java conventions variables should be in lowercase. Um, it's just it helps communicate the nature of, of the variable. Okay. Um, okay. So there's the the, the count in poverty and the um, the number infectious 
is is set to be uh, DS there. Okay. Um, now I'm getting quite a few cases where it seems to be dying out um, at a at a preliminary level, but but certainly some it it creates. Okay. So now we have a a little graph that um, displays several things, um, which is uh, which is nice. Um, we can. Uh, we can make this a little bit larger so that it's not truncated on the left-hand side. These are sort of common things you, you find out. It's only keeping the last 100 samples, so you diagnose that. I just enlarge the space between sort of this, this thing and, and the other by, um, by, uh, by lengthening it, and that, that lets it display without truncating, et cetera, okay? Um, okay, so those are those are some nice things. But there we're drawing from a data set. Let's draw from a let's draw from a statistic now. So now we can have uh, a data set, and this will be um, count males, right? Count males, um, um, and um, maybe we want to here um, do um, people dot count count males. Um, Something along those lines, um, and uh, and we could we could run this. Um, so it's item only for statistics. Now you have item dot. And now you're using people dot. Um, okay, yeah. So so maybe I'll explain the difference between the two. That's a good question. Let me. I, I realized I, I skipped on from this pretty quickly. So let's let's go back so people can see this more clearly. I apologize for. For, for, so this is a value. So I did add data items. I chose to do value. I gave it a title, which is just for our own, um, uh, own education. And then I gave it a value. And this people. What is people referring? This should really be this dot people um, to be sort of to be pedantically clear about it. Um, what is this dot people? This this is is what it's to the main object. And what is people? It's the Population. And I'm saying for the population to the statistic. Okay. Now, it's computing that statistic. Within that statistic, the definition of the statistic is you item to refer to each successive person, so that you can specify what is the condition that you want to check. So, given a person called a, a reference to a person where that reference is called item, what condition do you want to check with that? And we specify that condition. Um, Using a little expression, so um, I'm just I'm just trying to explain this this difference here. So when we defined a statistic, um, here are these statistics. Basically, what we were doing is we were defining. We were saying, hey, count these things up, and what criteria do I under what criteria do I count? Do I increment my count? Well, the criteria is if if you have a if you have so under what conditions do I increment my count for a given person? Well, OK, suppose that person is, is called item. The reference of that person is called item. Under what conditions do I, do I consider that? Do I add that to my count? Well, the condition is such that it's when that person's sex is, is 0, in other words, no male. Or for female, item of sex equals 1. So this is used in specifying the condition that you are checking or that you are counting for these statistics, okay? That, that's what this is. It's just a specification of the condition you want to count up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And, and when we're calling the statistic as a whole, like count female, this, this is just now a service that people offer It can count females. It has that statistic that it can, it can perform. And so we could count, we could call that from the graph 
and we can create bar charts and time plots and we can create histograms um, histograms of, of quantities over time um, etc um, and there's um, there's histogram data that we can accumulate if we want to get an understanding of uh, variability within the population, for example, we can do that with histogram data. But time is pressing, and, and um, unfortunately, I'm going to need to kind of move on here. Um, just be aware that there's uh, there is the capacity to accumulate. Um, maybe I'll just show what that what that looks like. Um, within here, you could set a range of values. You can calculate the um, cumulative distribution function or calculate the the percentiles. Um, <laughs> And uh, you can do this for a particular value and accumulate that, that information uh, over time, okay? Um, okay, so um, uh, we, we did this, we ran the model, we saw this. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to need to sort of um, finish this up soon. So let's, let's talk uh, a little bit more about... Um, uh, about some additional uh, features. So if you have stocks and flows in your model, maybe you have them at the global level for things like environmental change and um, aspects, you know, solely changing aspects of the regulatory environment, and you want, to, you want to inspect them. Or maybe you have them at the individual level to represent individual dynamics in some continuous fashion. People's diabetic, you know, blood glucose level over time or something like that. Um, uh, here, you'd represent them with stocks and flows in any logic, and these are really nice. You can click on them and, and record things, um, which is um, uh, which is uh, very very convenient. Okay. Um, um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to record um, flow variables over time, like this, this is a common need. And let, let me ask this: if I could take now ten minutes. And explain how to how to keep track of flow variables. So, the, so right now we're keeping track of, of what I call stock variables, variables that summarize the state of the population at a given moment in time. So you can kind of freeze the situation: how many males are there, how many females, how many infectives, how many susceptible, that sort of thing. How many people are in poverty? Those are sort of snapshot characteristics. There's also characteristics. That, come on in, young man. Um, <laughs> There's also characteristics which are flow characteristics, which uh, which are um, differences, uh, you know, the total number of people infected per unit time, say, um, you know, between X and time Y. How many people are being infected per month? Um, and uh, those characteristics are um, uh, are not so obvious how to create. I mean, after all, how do you define a statistic that says count the number of people that have gotten infected in the last? month or something like that. Are people interested in seeing how to, how to do that? Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's Vox Populi, Vox Dei, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll um, take that as a, as a strong affirmation. So I'm going to go. And um, with your leave, I'm going to take a couple of screenshots of how I do this just so we can add it to the slides so you can reflect on it later. And future generations of students. Um, uh, perhaps yet unborn can, can reflect on it. Um, okay. Um, 